Linear equations, as the name indicates, means that the graph of the equation is a straight line. Let's first look at two simple questions. For the first question, the answer is a x equals to negative 2. If you recall, the graph of an equation is the collection of all the solution points of the equation. If you look at this vertical line, every point on it has the x coordinate of negative 2, therefore automatically satisfies this equation, x equals to negative 2. The y coordinate can be any real number and it won't matter. Similarly, the answer to this question is b, y equals to 4.5. Again, any point on this horizontal line has a y coordinate of 4.5, therefore automatically satisfies the equation. The x coordinate can be any real number, and it doesn't matter to this equation. So those two are examples of a special kind of linear equations, linear equations that only have one variable, x or y. If the equation is x equals to a constant, the graph is a vertical line. And if the equation is y equals to a constant, the graph is a horizontal line. Normally, we are more interested in linear equations with two variables, since it describes how one variable increases or decreases with the other. In real life, we are actually very familiar with this type of relation. Remember how we would describe that one thing is proportional to another. For example, with the same gas price, the total gas money you need to spend is proportional to how many gallons you buy. This type of linear equation has a general form like this. ax plus by plus c equals to zero. In this equation, a and b are both non-zero real numbers, and c can be any real number. The key point is x and y are both to the first order. So let's look at the graph on the left. If we pick two points on this line, and study how they are related. We see that the change in the x coordinates, delta x, is two units, while the change in the y coordinates, delta y, is three units. In fact, no matter how we choose two different points on this line, it is always true that the ratio between delta y and delta x is a constant, in this case 3 over 2 or 1.5. In everyday life, we call it a constant rate of change. Here we give it a name, slope, represented by letter m. Now we know that y is proportional to x by a coefficient of 1.5. So we can, we can write this. But it is not complete. Notice this point here, 0, 1. We already learned that this is where the line intercepts with the y-axis, the y-intercept. This means that when x equals to 0, y must equal to 1. With this information, we can now complete the equation. It can be rewritten into the general form to be 1.5x minus y plus 1 equals to 0, but let's keep it this way for now. This is because it is known as the convenient slope-intercept form of linear equation. From this form, we can easily tell the slope of the equation, and also we can tell where the line intercepts with the y-axis. Once again, for any two arbitrary distinct points on this line, x1, y1, and x2, y2, it is always true that the slope m equals to delta y over delta x. The difference between the y coordinates over the difference between the x coordinates. It can also be written this way, but not this way. 
you need to make sure that the order of subtractions is consistent for the numerator and the denominator. If the line is an increasing line, which means that y increases as x changes from left to right, then the slope m is positive. On the other hand, if it is a decreasing line, meaning that y decreases as x changes from left to right, then the slope m is negative. And recall the two special cases we talked about earlier. If it is a horizontal line, y is constant no matter how x changes, the slope m is zero. And for a vertical line, no matter how y changes, the change in x is always zero. The slope m approaches infinity or undefined. If we know the slope of a line, but we don't know the y-intercept, we can still write the equation of this line if we know the coordinates of at least one point on this line, say, point x1, y1. Then, for another arbitrary point, x, y, on the same line, this is always true because of the definition of the slope. Please be reminded that this is an equation with two variables, since m, x1, and y1 are all known coefficients. This can be rewritten as this, and again, only x and y are variables. If the slope of the line is not known, but we know two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2 on this line, we can also write the equation for this line, but we just first need to calculate what the slope is using the definition. And then, just like the previous discussion, for any arbitrary point x, y on the same line, we can write this again following the definition of the slope. This part right here is the equation with two variables that we were looking for. Once again, x1, y1, x2, y2 are all known coefficients. The only variables are x and y. If you wish to, we can rewrite this equation, although it might not be necessary. But then again, only x and y are variables. Lastly, for two lines that are parallel to each other, they have the same rate of change, therefore their slopes equal to each other, m1 equals to m2. For two perpendicular lines, their slopes satisfy that the product of them equals to negative 1, m1 times m2 equals to negative 1. And of course, these lines do not include the special lines, the horizontal lines or the vertical lines.